Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you once again. Welcome to uh, the Lot and Rain Kingdom Online School. I want to appreciate everyone for being uh, a part of this institution. And I know we are being blessed tremendously. Uh, we just rounded off our course on the priesthood. And now we are introducing another course called the Law and the Prophet. Hallelujah. Uh, you must have often heard me said that I do not believe that anyone understands and knows the scripture when you don't have the understanding of the law and the prophet. Now the law and the prophet are the foundation of the uh, scripture. It's very important that we understand these. Uh, when we did um, um, the biblical survey and appreciation, I took them to show us the layers of the scripture. And I mentioned the seven layers of the Bible. I, I mentioned uh, the law, the prophet, the gospel, the acts of the apostles, the epistles, the writings of John, and then finally, the book of Revelation. Praise God. And now we're dealing with the fundamental, which is called the law and the prophet. Now you must understand that the scripture is actually the law and the prophet, the law and the prophet. Now in the days of Jesus on his earth walk, Jesus used the scripture to teach, to communicate. If you read in um, Luke 4, uh, the scripture said Jesus returned uh, from the wilderness in the power and he entered the temple and the scripture was given to him. From the scripture he read where it was written of him. So the law and the prophet, they are manual, they are scriptures. So in the writings of Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul drew all his inspiration from the law and the prophet. Hallelujah. So Paul used the law and the prophet in establishing the doctrines of Christ. He used the law and the prophet. Now, do not forget, in the days of Jesus, in the days of Apostle Paul, the epistles were not written. The gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were not written in those days. So what Apostle Paul used to teach and to communicate Christ and to communicate the kingdom was actually the law and the prophet. Now, I want us to understand that they, when we, uh, we have to talk about the law, and then we talk about the prophet. Now, when I mention the law, I'm talking about Genesis, Exodus, um, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So they are called Pentateuch. They are also called the Torah. Now, they're the first five books of the Bible. Praise God. Now, I want you to understand that these books are basically doctrinal. Now, doctrinal in the sense that the doctrines of God, the doctrines of scripture are, you know, they contain the doctrines of God. Praise God. Now, Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. He said, all scripture is given by the inspirations of God. Now, when Paul said all scripture, when he said that, what he actually meant was the law and the prophet. Now, because at that point, the epistles were not yet composed. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Acts of Apostles, they were not there yet. So when he said all scriptures, he was referring to these five books. And then the prophets, they were given by the inspirations of God. And they are profitable for doctrine. You see now, that these scriptures are profitable for doctrine. Profitable for doctrine, correction, praise God, correction, instructions in righteousness that the man of God will be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So that means that with the law and the prophet, a perfect man in the measure of the stature of Christ can be raised. Hallelujah. With the law and the prophet, we can raise a man 
for a good work. Amen. So it's basically doctrinal. These are where the doctrines of Christ we are laid down. So the law and the prophet, hallelujah, is the foundation of all other scriptures. Now, all other scriptures, they came out of the law and the prophet. As we go on in this course, we will see that. And this is why it is vital and important for us to have understanding of the law and the prophet. Now, this scripture said that he, um, you know, he um, established, he declares the end from the beginning. So, from the beginning, which is from the Pentateuch, he had already declared revelations. He had declared the end of all things from the beginning. So, the doctrines of Christ were established in the doctrines of the Bible. So we must understand the significance of the law and, and the prophet. So without it, we will rest on in understanding the rest of the scripture. Hallelujah. So most of the things we, we see in the New Testament, they are taught, developed. They are taught, they just they are taught from the from the law, then developed by the prophet, and then the writers of epistle begin to develop this thought. So without the law and the prophet, you cannot actually interpret scripture. You cannot actually get accuracy of understanding. So you're just hanging on top. Just like when you come to the Acts of Apostles, you see the days of Pentecost drew near. So it takes you going to the law to know what the Pentecost is, the life of the Pentecost, and everything it entails. Now, one of the reasons why we struggle to interpret scripture is simply because we don't know the foundation. Now, for instance, we see in uh, Revelation chapter 12 where the sun, the moon, and the star were played out. So we can't get what was said until we go to the law and see where the sun and the moon. Hallelujah. And also in the, the foundation of that in Genesis 1, then we go to the days of Jacob. When, he, when, 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 when Joseph had a dream, when he had a dream of the, you know, in that dream we saw the star, we saw the moon, we saw the sun, and then the prophetic interpretation. Now we must understand that the scripture is not only doctrine for moral, it's also prophetic doctrine, prophetic letters. They are prophetic, you know, you know, writings that speaks things to come. Praise God. So like I said, hallelujah. So the law is vital to understand. The law is very, very, uh, uh, to understand of the law is vital. Now because uh, without the law, we cannot begin to, we can't begin to appreciate the New Testament scripture. We can't appreciate it. We can't draw meaning from that. Hallelujah. We can't draw reasonable meaning. So everything will just hang. Now, because of the lack of the understanding of the law and the prophet, there are certain things we can't unfold. One of the reasons why men are afraid to touch the book of Revelation and to, to break some things in the epistles is because of lack of understanding of the law. In fact, we can't even interpret certain things. So there is actually betting of wrong doctrines because of understanding, because of lack of understanding. Now, we are confused today about the trumpet because we do not understand that in the law there is what they call the ministry of the trumpet. We do not understand that God has to say to Moses, make trumpet for the calling out of the people. Stated the reason for the trumpet. But you see, we just go to the book of Testament and we saw at the last trump. So how do we understand the last trump when we do not understand the law and the prophet? Hallelujah. Now, you see, this is very interesting. You can't say the last trumpet when you have not established the fourth, the second, the third. So you need to go to the law and get an accurate understanding and get the foundation. So when we approach scripture without understanding the law, it's like someone who, who doesn't have the foundational knowledge of things. The foundation of all learning is learning one, two, three, and A, B, C, D. And sometimes it amazes me when I begin to teach things like the Lord the Prophet, things like the Feast of Israel, things like Jubilee, things like the Tabernacle. People say these are high things. These are no, they are not high things. They are the elementary. They are the foundational. They are the foundation 
we must, you know, build on before we begin to build every other thing on it. You see, every reasonable uh, study of scripture for proper understanding must begin with these things, this understanding. Or must begin with the understanding of Sabbath rest. Must begin with all with the tabernacle. Must begin with the feet because uh, in these things lie the rest of the things stated in the Bible. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So now some of the things you must know about the law, because we are focusing on the law, then when we finish the law, uh, we will be looking at the prophet. Praise God. Now the law provides insight into the nature of God. Law gives us insight about God. He's a holy God. The holiness of God, hallelujah. The nature of God, He's a uh, omniscient, He's a uh, omnipotent. The nature of God is, is being stated in the law. Hallelujah. So, amen. So we see that God is a God that loves righteousness. God is a God that loves equity. God is a God that loves judgment. So it is in the law that we understand this nature of God. He painted it very well. You see, now, the epistles were drawn from... Now, Paul was using the law to communicate solutions, to communicate answers to the people of his days. Now, because the epistles are occasional letters. They are occasional in the sense that certain things occasion the event. So Paul drew inspiration from the law to answer them. So we could find in the epistle maybe just about 30% of the messages of the Lord, the prophet. So this is why it is important for us to have accuracy of understanding. If we do not have the understanding, we will not understand the thought. We will not understand the things that Apostle Paul was communicating. Like I said earlier, you wouldn't understand the trumpet. Paul just mentioned in the person at the last trump. So Paul wasn't actually teaching the trumpet. If Paul was teaching the trumpet in detail, he would have told us about the first trumpet, the second trumpet, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. So he just mentioned the last trumpet. And today, as, as some of us in the church, we are confused, no understanding. Someone can just say, at the last trumpet. So you can't say last until there is first, probably second, third, and fourth. So there's no way we can have this understanding except we go to the law and study the best, the foundation. They will be able to see when God instructed Moses to make a trumpet. Hallelujah. And the reason for that. So because of this lack of understanding, people thought that trumpet is just, you know, when it sounds, people just fly to heaven and all of this. So they miss the intention and the content and why God, praise God, and why uh, um, God have to ordain the ministry of the trumpet. Hallelujah. So the law served to establish the requirement of fellowship with God. Hallelujah. So sometimes, most of us, we don't know the requirement, what it takes to fellowship with God. So in the law, uh, we saw um, the requirement, the standard, what God wants, how to relate with God has to be by the priesthood and not just by the priesthood. It also has to be a specific garment that a priest has to wear. So we must understand the requirement, the standard and all of those things and what God wants. Hallelujah. So these are, are the reasons why they are necessary. Like I said, they are the foundation of all scripture. They are doctrinal. They are doctrinal in case, I just want you to understand this, that the whole doctrine of God is actually finished in the law. There is nothing new from the law. Hallelujah. As I said, the Lord had spoken. Who can be prophesied? God has spoken in the law. His intention is mine, what he wants. Any other thing that even the, 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 the prophet, they were amplifying the things that the law has said. Now such as you see, like I said, there is no new thought in the law. Sorry, in the prophet, in the epistles, in the gospel, in the book of Revelation, they are just expanding, they are just enlarging what God has already said in the law. The Lord has spoken. Who bad can prophesy? There's no new revelation. No new revelation. All we need is illumination, light of what God has said. 
You know, sometimes what we call revelation is actually illumination in the right sense. Hallelujah. To illuminate what God has already said. To, true, to, to bring light. And this is the reason why Holy Ghost is given unto us. The Holy Ghost is given unto us to, to, to shed light on the things that God had already said. That's why Jesus said that when Holy Ghost comes, He will guide us to all truth. He's not going to speak new truth. It's something that is there already that God had already said in His law. So the Holy Ghost will guide us in the truth of God, in the established truth of God. He will guide us to those things. Yeshua said, He will take of me. He will take of me. Where will He take it from? In the scripture, in the things written down. Now, because uh, Philip in John 1 45, the Bible said, and Philip found it, Nathaniel said, We have found him whom the scripture did write, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So, the scripture, the law, is Christ. That's why he's the, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, Christ was put in a shadow. We saw the tree of life, is Christ. We saw the garment of Aaron, is Christ. We saw the twelve. Love of shoe bread is Christ. All of those things, they were painted Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So we understand the basis of fellowship with God. We understand the basis of the feast of Israel, how Israel come to fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, uh, another very important thing we must know about the law is that all further taught in Scripture emanate from the law. There is nothing that came, everything Apostle Paul said, everything that Peter said, they all came from the law. Peter said, a day is like a thousand years. It's already in Psalms. It's already in Psalms. When Paul was talking to uh, that Corinthian church, uh, we have been thrown onto one husband. At the end, I present to you a chaste virgin. It's already in Genesis chapter 2. Hallelujah. He said, I'm afraid, least the serpent. He's already referring to Genesis chapter 3. So we must understand that all of those thoughts are, are developed from the law. When we see the tree of life in, uh, in Psalm, we saw the tree of life in Proverbs, we saw the tree of life in the book of Revelation. The, the thought was drawn from the tree of life in, in Genesis chapter 2 and 3. So when Peter said that he are a royal priesthood, we already saw, saw that in uh, Exodus chapter 19, where God said, my intention is that Israel will be a priest unto me, a kingdom of, of priests unto me. So we need to go and get the foundational knowledge of what God is saying in his word. Now, because we, we did not pay attention to, uh, to this, in fact, some those who were ahead of us actually fought the Lord, the prophet. They said that God is true with them. But that's not the truth. And the matter, the truth is that the law and the prophet is not even Old Covenant. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Old Covenant is actually the particular law that God made with Israel on Sinai. So Genesis is speaking to us today. Exodus is speaking to us today. All of those things are speaking to us today. Praise God. So they are very important. We must know uh, that all other scriptures, they emanate. Hallelujah. The emanate from this foundational book. Amen. And that important thing that we must know is that every other scripture drew their authority from the law. The prophet derived his authority, amen, from the law of Moses. In fact, Moses gave a test of knowing the first prophet and all of those things. They drew, so they're not speaking outside the law. So it must be in alignment with what the law said. Because scripture cannot contradict uh, scriptures. Praise God. So the law acts as a physical representation of a spiritual dimension of worship found in the, in the New Testament. So Paul could say that the law is a schoolmaster to guide us to Christ. Hallelujah. So in this course, um, the law and the prophet is a cause that we must pay attention to so that we can know actually what God wants. Uh, praise God. Like I said, it is doctrinal. So anything that you you, 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 you you didn't see in the law, throw it away. Like there are doctrines we cannot trace from the law and the prophet. And those things are what we are championing today. 
in the church as the goal of the faith. So it is in, in the law that we see the purpose of man. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Hallelujah. Let them have dominion. It's actually the kingdom. In other words, let them bring the kingdom of God upon the earth. Let them bring the kingdom of God. Let them establish the rule and the order of God upon the earth. Praise the name of Jesus. Let them you know, establish heaven upon the earth. So God created man in his image. After his, you know, uh, man after that grew to the likeness of God by partaking of the tree of life. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So, um, the law is very, understanding of the law is very vital in understanding um, the rest of the, of the scripture. We must give attention to it. Give attention to scripture. When Paul was talking to Timothy, study to show thyself approved. It was the law and the prophet. Like I was saying, in those days, the epistles were not written. The apostle, the act of apostle was not written. The gospel, John, Mark, Luke, Mark, Matthew, they were not written then. Praise God. Daniel said, I understand by the books. I understand by the book. Daniel was referring to the book of um, Jeremiah. Yes, by the book of Jeremiah. So you see that Yeshua in his days uh, made use of the of the law. He used it, he saw where it was written concerning him. He would then say, as the scriptures say, as the scriptures say, he quotes Ezekiel. As the scriptures say, he quotes Ezekiel. Hallelujah. He quotes Ezekiel. You see, in the council in a uh, Jerusalem, when some Gentiles came to settle matters and some issues concerning the church, New Testament church, concerning the church, when they came and gathered together at Jerusalem, certain brethren uh, to resolve certain issues about circumcision, about food meant for idols, about uh, the daughter and all of those things. Why they were so, you know, given their submission. And James brought answer and solution to that, and quoted and he quoted Amos that the the tabernacle of David will be raised. That what he used to solve the, the problem, and they under understood what James was talking about, and that's what from the law. That's to show that the early apostles what they used in interpreting in preaching the gospel is the law. So the epistles are are helping us for the breaking down and for the understanding of the thought of God in the law. The gospel also is helping us. Hallelujah. Now because gospel is not speaking any other thing apart. Now because the foundation of the prophecy of Yeshua coming is in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head. So when we saw Jesus born in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and, and Luke, what was seen? The seed of the woman. That Genesis spoke of. We saw all his redemptive work. It's all about the bruising of the Satan's head. It has no new thought. So when Isaiah said that, behold a virgin shall conceive, it's from the seed of the woman. It's not a new thought. When we see as of apostle, we see the manifestation, activities of the seed of the woman. And we saw the book of Revelation. We saw the final establishment of the kingdom of God and the throne and how the seed of the woman crush the head of Satan, crush Babylon's system, crush the you know the the bruise the seed the head of um the seed of the woman who bruise the head of the serpent. Now the head of the serpent is actually the government of Satan. The government he established. So the church, which is a seed, will come and they crush down and pull down the government, the structures of this world. That you see in the book of Revelation chapter, you know, chapter 10 verse 7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mysteries of God will be finished. The mysteries of God is finished. And in Revelation chapter 11 verse 15, and the seventh angel sang, he said, Behold, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God, and he shall reign. So we saw the crushing, which has it taught from Genesis. So we must understand the prophecy. When the seven angels sounded in Revelation chapter um, 11 verse 15, 
and the kingdoms of this world crumbled and become the kingdoms of our God. So that thought in Revelation chapter 11, like I said, it began from Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent, and the head of the serpent is the kingdoms of this world, is the kingdoms of this world that Satan had authority over. So in essence, we need a thorough, a comprehensive understanding of the law and the prophet. Hallelujah. Um, we have so many things to say uh, in the law and the prophet. I want you to open your heart and join with us in this particular course. It's going to be very profitable to us. Don't forget that the Bible said, that Paul said to, to Timothy, that all scripture is given by the inspirations of God. In order what the law and the prophet is given by the inspirations of God is profitable for doctrine. Profitable for doctrine. Correction. Rebuke. Hallelujah. Correction. Instructions in righteousness that the man of God will be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. God bless you. Thank you so much. In case you have a question to ask, you are free to ask a question. Send your questions on our WhatsApp group and it will be attended to. God bless you. Looking forward to see you uh, in the next course. Amen. Thank you.